two pieces of news to break here. One on Watson. Yes. Watson anywhere now. You'll be able to run Watson in Amazon's cloud, in Microsoft's cloud, as well as in IBM's cloud. Why do this? And kind of percentage-wise, how much do you think it can grow the Cognitive Solutions Group? Yeah. So look, um, for, but there's more than two big pieces of news at this conference. <laughs> as you said, 26,000 people, 2,000 business sessions here. Um, and what Watson Anywhere is about, it's really demand of clients, and it's got to do with data. You know, we talk a lot about how much data everyone has and where is the data and do you have to protect it, do you want to move it? And so this is really in response to that. So it says Watson can run on your premise, you didn't mention that, on your premise, it can run in any cloud and it can connect between them. And so that's really what clients are asking for. They may say, you know what, I want to train Watson with my own data on my prem and then I'll run it on a cloud somewhere else. Or I want to experiment somewhere, but then when it comes to production, my trading algorithms, I want to run it here. And so it's got to do with both size, location, protection of data, and then the ability to run anywhere. And so the run anywhere comes, I mean, when you say, why now? Mm -hmm. We actually, we had to do a lot of work around the IBM Cloud Private, which is what Watson runs on. That's Kubernetes-based, that's container-based, which has a, everything to do with our hybrid position. As you know, Red Hat's coming up. Yeah. And so this allows it to move anywhere out there. So, so this will be a big growth. The well, Watson it, look, business. This is a big piece, not just of Watson, a uh -huh. big piece of hybrid cloud, which yeah. You've heard me say, we think that's a trillion dollar market and we'll be number one in it. So okay. that gives you a good feeling. You're also announcing this cloud integration platform. Yes. Fitting on that same theme you were just talking on, um, and, and we've heard it from other companies too, businesses are demanding to be able to get data out of these various silos, get them ready to move to the cloud. Um, how is IBM's approach with this different than say, Salesforce and MuleSoft? They told the same story around, yeah. hey, we need to get data out of all these places so our customers can put it yes. to work. V very big difference. So first, back up. This conference is about chapter two, scaling AI, and now the cloud becomes hybrid. And the reason it becomes hybrid is because the first chapter of the cloud, a lot of customer facing new apps went on the public cloud. But now, chapter two is you got mission critical. That's all on-prem that's got to move, and it's going to take containers, Kubernetes, open technologies to then move those. And what, what you start to have to happen is that people are going to end up with, in fact, we've done studies, 40% in a private cloud, 60 in public. If you're regulated, the other way around. And then you're going to move data between and amongst those and then have to manage them. That's what we're doing. So the integration platform that you just mentioned that's being announced is to allow you to manage data and services and apps moving between these places and communicating between them. When do we start to see, um, if your setup is correct, about mm -hmm. IBM being differently positioned from a, a Salesforce, when do we start to see an acceleration of IBM pulling ahead of the others who are telling a similar story? Yeah, well, first off, Salesforce is a partner of ours too, right? And remember, they work with Watson. We've got a lot of things. We're the number one <laughs> implementer of Salesforce. But when it comes to integrating apps and modernizing them, because chapter two here is going to be driven by modernization of mission critical apps. That is right in our sweet spot. And so when you say, when do we start to see some of that? You saw last quarter our cognitive solutions. You saw that return to growth. You saw that hybrid cloud very strong, IBM Cloud Private very strong. And you actually saw in our services business um, things like BNP Paribas, the biggest bank all to the cloud. You'll see us announce another big financial services to the cloud while we're here at this conference. And so you saw that with our services backlog, 30% now cloud. So these are all indicators that this is moving. Uh, tell me about CEO confidence. Last time we talked, it was just a couple of days after the Fed Chair Jerome Powell made those comments about being patient. The market really uh, took an upswing after that. Have you seen um, the confidence of, of CEOs who you're trying to get to, to continue to buy with IBM on a trajectory since then? Have things improved sentiment-wise, or has it been pretty steady? Uh, I think it's been fairly steady. Um, and I, I hear from all of my colleagues that everyone is still planning, as I say, both ways. On one hand, they've been planning down, you know, you can look at growth or efficiency. I would, if I just, you know, over curve over time, as I've said, you would have seen more toward the growth side. I see that balance now between growth and efficiency initiatives. And I actually see that staying very firm and they're, they're one foot in both camps. Uh, the, the White House, along the theme we've been talking about here on AI, just put out this executive order on AI. Uh, are we behind? Um, 
You know, I, I've heard people talk about is America behind on AI, and sometimes they liken it to, well, other countries have more data, and they, they can train, they have less policy around it. I want to remind, a lot of data right now for where technology is matters, but the AI we're working on is to train with a lot less data. I mean, the next state-of-the-art rev on AI is less data. In fact, one-shot learning, it's called. And so I don't believe data will be the only determinator here. Mm -hmm. De determinator, is that the right word? We know <laughs> Determinant, you know what I meant? <laughs> and so uh, to that point, um, do I think America's behind? No, and I actually think you mentioned that executive order on AI. It's a good step forward here. Do um, we need more of that? More yeah, we need more of it. Because you've worked yes. with other countries we have. who have done this I, I'll, I'll bet we've worked with almost 20 countries on their AI policies. And in fact, many countries have national policies around an industrial way that they're going to go. So this is, I think, long overdue, but I think it's a great step in the right direction. And it calls out the right areas to be worked on. Part of it are the core technologies, R&D. You know, our Department of Energy, that hosts all our national labs, which have, by the way, the IBM supercomputers for AI in them. Right. And those, in fact, are great, a great bed to open up to learn skills that are out there. You want to have standards policies that are out there. And you want to use federal data so you start training ethical AI. So anyways, speaking, I, all good steps. Speaking of those labs, IBM has been a big employer in New York State for a long time. Mm -hmm. Amazon's now trying to move into New York City facing some pushback. Queens might just say, thanks, but no thanks. If that happens, if Queens says no thanks to Amazon, what is the message to business? Well, I can tell you what we've learned over the years, right? I mean, because as you know, we're in 170 countries. And I've always said what I learned out of that was you have to be of the country that you're in. And so for us, we've always aligned ourselves with the agenda of the country, the city, no matter what it is and really prided ourselves in being a great citizen of each of those places. And when you do that, you're welcome everywhere. So w what does that say about the process that you need to go through to pick where you go and how you engage with the constituents there? Yeah, no, our, our lesson of, has always been to engage, understand what's important. And some of the basics are always important about skills, about jobs, and align with what you're going to do with those. And I think that's a, a lesson for everybody. Mm. Um, finally, uh, as we look out at what you're doing here at Think in this multi-cloud kind of hybrid environment. What's a win for IBM coming out of this? Um, what is different about IBM's approach that you want the people who are here who might also be at Dreamforce, Open World, et cetera, to come away with? Yeah, look, it, to, an order chapter two of the cloud is to move to hybrid. That means you are gonna go through a journey to take the applications you have today and modernize them. We give them both the services, we're gonna announce 23 end-to-end -end services for that journey today. The second thing we give you is the software and the cloud, both the public cloud and the private cloud and all the connection for any cloud, including our own and on-prem. And then as well, and it's software, services, public cloud, and we're also announcing today the most secure public cloud. You will see an announcement later today that it is the most secure public cloud, something called HyperProtect that's out there. Okay. So they would walk away and say, if I've got to, got to modernize my mission-critical apps, IBM is the only partner to do that.